Hey, it's Dr. Centeno, and let's take a look at internal jugular vein compression and why in CCI patients this is a dynamic phenomenon, or usually a dynamic phenomenon. Um, so here we have a CTA, and uh, we have here uh, the internal jugular vein, and on this side, which corresponds to this image down here, we have some moderate to severe compression of the IJV. This is the transverse process of C1. This is the styloid here, which is calcified. And we're seeing some blockage of flow. Now, you can compare that to the other side where we see good flow. Uh, now, that maps directly to what's going on with the C1, C2 facet joint. Here we have uh, an offset here of about two millimeters between C2 and C1. And uh, that corresponds to the, the position here that is causing decreased flow. And here we have less of an offset between C1 and C2. And that is corresponding to a position where we have more flow in that IJV. So again, in my experience, these are usually dynamic issues, right? If you've got C1, C2 instability, then you're going to get more intermittent IJV compression. And IJV compression by itself is pretty common in asymptomatic individuals. But I think in some individuals with craniocervical instability, we see intermittent compression of the IJV that leads to increased head pressure and other symptoms like pulsatile tinnitus, et cetera. <clears throat> so just realize that this is usually a dynamic phenomenon. It's usually related to excessive movement or rotation at C1, C2. And obviously, if that's the case, the goal is to reduce that instability at C1, C2, not to go in and cut out things um, around the IJV. Uh, so thanks so much for watching and have a great day.